Meredith Hegner, you play Portia Davenport on Search Party. She's an actress like you, mm -hmm. but you can't really be accused of just playing yourself because this is a performance that is always on. So can you describe the performance that you give? Oh, well, um, yeah, I hope I don't. I hope, I hope people don't meet me and think I'm like my character. That would be um, terrifying. Uh, describing the performance I give, I don't know. It changes every season. I feel like the writing gets better and the stakes get higher. Um, I think sort of like the character study of an actress is really fun and meta to play when you are an actress. And I find there's just so many deeply sad and humiliating elements to this job, especially that I could, that I sadly could pull from, especially from my early days. Um, so she's kind of an amalgamation of a lot of past experiences I've had, uh, actresses I know, cautionary paths I hope not to take. Uh, and she's, she's very fun to play. What about her experience this past season uh, with social media, how she tries to announce something, get ahead of the studio? Uh, did that <laughs> hit home for you at all? You know, I'm so terrible at the social media thing, but I, you know, in thinking about like, what's, what would Portia want more than anything, I think is like social media fame. Um, and I do think it is like, yeah, she goes, she goes on, she goes on her Instagram. Yeah. It's exactly to get ahead of um, being fired and to try to beat them to it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think, I, I think about like that, her, that being a social being, you know, having a lot of Instagram followers, I feel like would be her greatest dream. Um, but yeah, no, that those, that scene was, was really so fun because I guess we do use social media in an interesting way now. Right. Um, so her kind of like manipulating the situation, trying to figure out how to, how to beat them at their own game was, was really fun. You said that things really change every season. So what did you bring this season uh, to switch up your performance? I mean, I find like, I love the feeling of getting a script and going like, oh no, can I do this? Um, and our writers are also dear friends of ours. And I think they know what we can do and they challenge us and they push us um, to take things on. I found that you know, season four was really kind of a breaking point for Portia. It was like all of these things that have happened to her, she's been sort of, she is so susceptible uh, and she basically is the definition of a follower. Um, and so kind of playing with that and just what happened by season episode, I think nine, she has like a real breakdown. Um, and so I just really enjoyed going to the place of like, what really does happen to someone who's gone through this journey of like, kind of being pushed into burying a body and, and being a part of this murder and then searching for someone who doesn't even want to be found um, and finally reaching that like, you know, light burning out moment. Um, so I feel like I got an opportunity to go to some really different dark places and I'm very grateful for the writing. Yeah, what do these scripts look like? Like, how does the writing, uh, when you actually see it on a script level, differ for Search Party versus other shows? Or oh, films? right. Well, I mean, they, I just think our writers, Espy and Charles and creators, they just, they don't, part of their writing that I love about it is it's it's satirical in, in its kind of broader tone, but they they kind of follow no rules. Like one minute you feel like you're in, I was joking, like I was doing a scene the other day because we we're shooting season five where I was like, I feel like I'm in Handmaid's Tale. And then another scene where, you know, there's there's farce and this kind of elements of screwball comedy. And so the fact that all of these different tones exist within each script, um, all and, and it's just the, uh, they, they know how to take risks as writers, which in turn makes me feel confident to take risks at the same time. What were your questions going into season five? You know, for me personally, every season I get so nervous right before because I get, I do get the scripts and they're so good and I don't know how they keep topping it, but they do. So honestly, this season I was like, what if, you know, I realize what a gift this job is. What if I just have so much fun? You know, what if I just 
follow my instincts. At this point, these characters are so in us. Um, and I've just learned to trust in our creators and I think they have such good taste. So at this point, I have story questions like, you know, every actor does and figuring out plot and story and all that. But other than that, I'm really just trying to like enjoy how fun it is to get to do this bizarre show that I think is so special with my friends. It's such an amazing role, really is. So I'm just like, what if I just really, really enjoy it this season? Not that I haven't before, but go for it. Yeah, it keeps surprising me that the uh, show keeps coming back. I thought the season four finale might've been it when, you know, Dory honestly, died. me too, but wait till <laughs> you see season five, Bill. It's, it's there. There the scripts are really unbelievable. Uh, so this interview is uh, really part of your Emmy campaign. Uh, mm-hmm. You're in the comedy supporting actress category. The winner last year was Annie Murphy. She won't be winning again as Shit's Creek is over. She talked a lot about how she uh, held her hands in a very specific way and had other mannerisms to uh, deliver her portrayal of, you know, kind of uh, satirizing socialites. I'm wondering yeah. if there are any like specific uh, physicality things that you do. Uh, oh, that's such yeah. a good question. It's so funny because season one, it all kind of happens organically. I always say that Portia really is like, there's so many people in Brooklyn and I'm here now in Williamsburg where especially women, we overhear them. Like, I can't believe that's a real person. And so I, I kind of like, listening and taking things but yeah there's there's there are little isms I say like sweetie and there's there's a there's so many things that I say that are so Portia and now the way that Portia walks like I kind of hunch over like I'm like in Lord of the Rings like I'm like Gollum in real life and Portia does not um and so yeah there's all this physicality that and, and once you've been doing a show for five seasons it really becomes a part of of um of that character so yeah I definitely I I I hold myself differently um she's very comfortable in heels whereas I am not (laughs) uh what about going back to when you first got the part do you remember like what they were kind of looking for in the role and what you wanted to bring to your audition well it's so funny I did a movie called hits which I really hadn't done much uh before that sorry the search party cast is texting me right now and I'm trying to So, um, but yeah, I had done this movie hits, uh, with David Cross. He really gave me this opportunity with this part. And, um, Charles had seen it, the creative search party. And I, all I knew is Portia was a narcissist and she was a millennial. And I was, I got the script for the pilot. And I was like, Oh, this is a fun kind of millennial comedy. I was just doing a scene with Alia yesterday. And I'm like, if you had told me we would be doing this, we'd be going to these places after reading the pilot script. But I just thought it was this really funny, quirky millennial comedy. And now it's been a courtroom drama and a thriller and all these other things. Um, so I, I read it and I really, I just really had fun with it. I didn't think, you know, it wasn't a huge, you know, 30 minute pilot. It was, there wasn't that much on the page in the pilot, but where it ended up going, um, I think there was no anticipating. I just knew I wanted to work with these people. And I think playing an actress is just so deeply fun and funny. Yeah, for me, the show is the kind of definitive satire or just show in general about millennial culture. Uh, What kind Uh, of commentary do you think it makes? I think as the years go on, because now we're on season five, we go from being these young millennials. We're like, I'm just so lost and confused. But now as millennials are kind of like aging out of that, it's sort of interesting how it becomes a comment on, you know, millennials now settling or what it is to settle into who you are when it was charming to be like I don't know who I am and now it's what does that look like over the passing of time with the show Uh, and I I do think they've really captured and satirized a moment in time and a generation in a way that's very brilliant and complex Um, but being having now played these characters for such a long time it is fun and funny to watch millennials like getting older (laughs) <laughs> uh, this past season they have that movie called Savage the Dory Seif story yeah Portia tries out for uh and then she she wants to play herself but she doesn't get that part mm-hmm. what does she get wrong about playing herself oh god I don't know I don't think she knows and I think that's where like the gray area of the performance lies um 
it's so funny. I think she she's somebody who does not know who she is. She's trying to look for her identity in other people and in other people validating her. So I think also I think her probably her acting style isn't as much like, oh, how do I ground and make it personal and make it, you know, I think she wouldn't even begin to know how to play herself. Um, so yeah, I think she just gets a lot. I think she has gotten a lot wrong, not only in performance of her, in her job, but in her life. And um, that like gray area of her not knowing who the hell she is, is um, one of my favorite elements of the character. Uh, do you have a favorite moment uh, from this uh, past season? God, there's so many. There's moments where we just laugh our asses off. And then there's moments as an actor without sounding too cheesy that I just, I can't help but feel very grateful, you know, for the, the opportunities I get in terms of different things I get to play. I mean, there's so few jobs where you get to bounce from so comedic to so uh, dark. And I, I loved the scene in four. I, I loved the car chase episode which felt super old school comedy and I loved. Um, but I loved when we all were having our breakdowns on the side of the road at like the second to last episode. Um, it was kind of cathartic for us as actors and it was just, that was a really fun scene. It was very cold, but it was very fun creatively. How about just a favorite uh, or a line that has stuck with you from the four seasons that we've seen? I, I miss when my problems were about nothing. There's just a few, there's been a few lines, but I love that. That one really is, I, I do think about that in my own life. I feel like during the pandemic, there were moments where I really do miss my problems were about nothing. Um, there's so many brilliant, brilliant lines from Espy and Charles, but that's one that I've always really liked. Are, are you calling her Espy? SV. SV, oh, okay. <laughs> what if I'm like, I don't know her name. I'm working with her for, no, SV. Yeah, can you uh, differentiate her, uh, Sarah Violet Bliss, and Charles uh, Rogers? Because they are the, you know, co-showrunners, co-creators, co-writers, yeah. uh, co-directors. So we always see them together, you know, at least yeah. on our end. So who are they to you as uh, individuals? Oh, you know, they're both separately my friends and kind of beautiful creative minds that work so well together. Um, they both, I look at them and then I look at like Alia John, the Johns, and I really just look at everybody as having kind of their own superpowers. Um, and it's this kind of beautiful mashup where I think, and even like Shalita Grant and Michaela Watkin, and Louis, all these unbelievable guest actors, up and coming comedians, up and coming, just incredible people that come and add whatever their own kind of brilliance is. And I think what SB and Charles, and I do kind of talk about them in a unit because on set, it really does feel like that. They kind of bounce off each other. Um, and I go to them for the same questions. It is really interesting that they work so well as a unit, uh, but they share such a sensibility and the show is so them that like, yeah. I mean, I, separately as friends, we I have my own relationships with each of them, but on set, they really are, are a unit, a creative unit. And it's, it's very, it's very cool. Yeah, you do just have nonstop, you know, great guest stars on the show. Uh, I'm wondering if there's anything uh, specific that you can remember learning from, you know, any of them. Oh, God, that's such a good question. I, I do feel I've learned a lot on the show. I've been a bit of a sponge. And like I said, I just think everybody has their own superpowers. I've worked, I've worked on a soap opera back in the day. And I remember back in the day, 110, but I remember like noticing even then and, and watching other actors and that's a medium where it gets no, I mean, it's, you know, it can be easy to not see through the lens of that kind of writing and that, that like really who's very good. Um, but I've always loved watching other actors and how they get from A to B to C. Um, Louis Anderson was like, felt like a master class in comedy watching him. Uh, there's just been so many people that come in where my jaws just dropped because Susan Sarandon. Um, yeah, there's just, I've learned so much. And, and from John Early, John Reynolds and Alia, each of them, I feel like I've just learned so much. And I'm, I'm so proud of each of them. I've watched them grow uh, so much over the past few years. 
Excellent. Okay. Well, Meredith, thanks very much for chatting with Cold Derby today, and we look forward to seeing season five. Thank you, Riley. It was so nice to meet you.